this question asks you to implement a stack using queues. So we'll start off by describing what the difference is between a stack and a queue. So with the queue, you'll commonly hear the term FIFO. This means first in, first out. And what that means is the first element that was added will be the first one removed. So you can picture this as like waiting in a line. Let's pretend this is the entrance. This is the first person to arrive. This is the second person to arrive. This person's the third and this person's the fourth. Which one's gonna be let in first? The one who arrived first. And then the next person who arrived right after that and so on and so forth. Let's move over to a stack. Stack is just the opposite. It's LIFO, so last in, first out. So with this one, you can picture a stack of dishes. So these are just, let's say, four plates stacked on top of one another. Which one are you gonna take first? You're gonna take the one at the top. Then you're gonna take the next one that's at the top. Next one and the next one. All right, so just to demonstrate that to you in another way, this is the queue over here. First element's added, second element's added, third element's added. Which one's gonna be removed first? The number one. Which one's next? The number two. Which one's next? The number three. Move over to a stack. Number one's added first, then number two, then number three. Which one will be removed first? Number, oops, sorry about that. The number three, followed by the number two, and then the number one. So before we begin coding, I just want to quickly go over what Leet Code has provided us. So as you can see, there is a MyStack class, and it has all the methods that it wants us to implement. So here is the push method. Pushing to a stack just adds an element to the top of the stack. Popping from a stack just removes the top element of the stack. Top just shows the element at the top of the stack and empty returns whether or not the stack is empty. But what I've gone ahead and done is added a queue class and I won't go over um, all the implementation details of this because that's not what this video is about. Just know that all code in this video is linked in the description below. But we have a peak method and that shows us what's at the bottom of the queue. A size method returns how many elements are in it. Is empty returns whether or not the queue is empty. DQ removes the bottom element of the queue and NQ adds an element to the top of it. All right, so as I said before, this is the costly pop method. So most of the work is gonna be done in the pop method and the rest of the methods will be pretty easy. The top method's actually pretty complicated as well, but it's pretty much the same code as the pop method and you'll see that. So, First thing we need to do is implement two queues and we'll call them primary and secondary queue. So this dot primary queue. It's a new queue. And this dot secondary queue is a new queue. All right, to push it, all we're gonna do is add it to the primary queue. So we'll use the in queue method of it, this dot primary queue dot in queue and what are we in queuing? X, X is going to be the element that we're adding. Now we get to the fun part, the pop method. In the pop method, remember what we're doing is removing every element in the primary queue except for one. And the elements that we remove, we're going to add to the secondary queue. Then we're just going to swap the primary and secondary queues. So while this dot primary queue dot size is greater than one. So while the primary queue has more than one element in it, this dot secondary queue dot in queue, this dot primary queue, wait, just notice I misspelled that, U, E, U, E. So this dot primary Q dot D, Q. Again, what this is doing is while the primary Q has more than one element in it, we're taking every element out of it and adding it 
to the secondary queue, leaving only one element in the primary queue. So now we just get a reference to the element that's left in the primary queue. So let bottom equal this dot primary queue dot dq. So we get a reference to the element that we're removing in the primary queue. Then we swap the primary and secondary queues. This dot secondary queue, this dot primary queue, and this dot primary queue equals temp. So all three of these lines just swap the two queues. So what's left is how the primary queue was before. It is exactly like that now, minus the top element. And then we just return the reference, sorry about that, the reference that we kept to the element that we removed. So return bottom. All right, so top is actually very similar to this, except we're not removing anything. I'll show you what I mean. So start off the same way while this dot primary queue dot size is greater than one this dot secondary queue dot in queue the things that we were removing from the primary queue remove everything from the primary queue and add it to the secondary queue but leave one of them all right so here's the difference instead of removing the element that's left in the primary queue we're just going to look at it and get a reference to it. So let bottom equal this dot primary queue dot peak. Now we're gonna add that element back to the top of the secondary queue. So after we're done with this step, the secondary queue looks exactly like the primary queue did before. So this dot secondary queue dot in queue, this dot primary queue dot dq. Removing the final element in the primary queue, adding it to the secondary queue. Now we swap the queues like we did before. Let temp equal this dot secondary queue. This dot secondary queue equal this dot primary queue. And then this dot primary queue equals temp. And now since the whole point of this method was to return the bottom element, we're going to return bottom. Remember this is the same bottom that we got a reference to earlier. All right, so I know my explanation of the top method wasn't the most clear explanation in the world. So let me try it this way. So let's say we have a queue that has the elements one, two, and three. We somehow need to know what's at the top of this queue. The problem as we know with queues is that they only show you what's at the bottom of the queue. So what you need to do is move every element in Q1 over to Q2 except for the final element. So you remove this, put it here. So at this stage, we look like this. You remove this one, put it here. So now we look like this. This allows us to see what the last element added was. So then what you need to do is get a reference to that element. In this case, it's the number one. And after that, you just move it back to where it was in the secondary queue. So now it's not there, it's at the top of this one. And since we didn't actually need anything done besides looking at that element, we'll just swap the two queues to make them look exactly like how they did before with the primary queue having one, two, three in it 
in the secondary queue having nothing. Okay, now all we have left is empty. So we just have to check whether the primary queue is empty. So return this dot primary queue is empty. All right, that should work. Let's test it. Looks good and submit. All right, it was faster than 13% of online submissions. When I've run this before, it's faster than about 90%, but yeah, leak code just varies depending on when you submit it. All right, see you next time.